Hey everyone, thanks for clicking. This is Rocky and I hope all is going well. Alright, this video is going to be my breakdown of the Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice movie. Alright, and this will be a spoiler review as I really need to talk about some specific moments to give context to what I'm discussing. Before getting into all that, I do want to urge you all to go watch the movie and come to your own conclusions on if it's good or not and not necessarily always trust what a reviewer or a critic is going to say. Again, it's their personal opinion, so definitely encourage you to check out the movie and go ahead and make your own opinions on it. For me, it was a matter of the story trying too hard to be different as well as just too many side stories and partial pieces and Easter eggs that kind of just jumbled together. That being said, it was still a very entertaining movie at times. I want to start by talking about two of the bigger character issues that I've seen brought up all over the net. The first being the idea of Batman killing and the other being the portrayal of Lex Luthor. For me I think a lot of the confusion is coming from the fact that the majority of the audience is probably coming from modern interpretations of the characters like the DC animated universe, the Batman Arkham games, as well as like the Nolan films and some of the more recent interpretations of Superman and Lex Luthor. Alright, so let's dig into Batman a little bit and the fact that he straight kills a lot of people in this movie. Granted, they are bad guys, but yeah, he is just a murderer. This is not actually new for Batman as his origins were basically a pulp comic and in those people did die quite a bit. Batman hung a man from his bat plane, crushed people with statues, impaled men on swords, and so much more. For quite some time, he actually carried a gun in the early days of the comics, and I think this is one place where Snyder drew a lot of inspiration. But again, the problem is the mass audience is more than likely not aware of this part of the character's history. The other thing to keep in mind is this movie plays up the fact that Bruce is a borderline sociopath. This had previously been used as kind of comedic relief in past movies, but in this I think they really wanted to play it up, which included a lot of messed up dreams. Now in the modern comics as well as the animated universe, Batman has a very strong no guns and no kill policy. Though there have been exceptions from time to time in alternate universes as well as in the mainstream comic that he kind of bent these rules. Honestly, the fact that Batman did not use guns for personal combat is one of the things that made him incredibly scary for villains. His vehicles have always had weapons, but again, typically they are not used to kill. So in my mind, people were expecting a Batman that is willing to break bones, but were presented with a Batman that kills without a second thought. Now again, this is a Batman that has spent 20 years fighting crime in Gotham and not really seen anything get better. In fact, it's kind of gotten worse and he also lost a sidekick, Robin. Or so we're meant to believe that, at least. So he already has some mental issues, then we add in the stress from everyone that died in Metropolis, and we have the Batman we are presented with in the movie. That being said, Ben Affleck completely nailed Bruce Wayne and Batman. His performance really blew me away, and he quite possibly has delivered the best Batman yet. And I'm really excited to see where he's going to take the solo Batman film, as he will actually be directing and starring and assisting with the writing as well. Now, why was Lex a spastic Riddler-like creepy guy? The short answer is because he was not Lex Luthor. And the longer answer is that he was actually Alexander Luthor Jr. The only mention of this in the movie was when Lex mentioned that his father was the Lex on the side of the building. And it was so quick that I think a lot of people may have missed it. It happened when he was first introduced on the basketball court meeting the senator. So who is Lex Jr.? Well, there have been a couple of characters, but for the movie, I think they were going off of Lex Jr., presented during Crisis of Infinite Earths. Now, I don't think he is meant to be from a different universe, but it does seem they adapted a lot of his character traits for the movie's version of Lex. In the comics, Lex Jr. was incredibly manipulative, had a beyond genius intellect, and was also super whiny. Sound familiar? So yeah, this is where I think Snyder and crew drew a lot of inspiration for Lex, and if so, then Eisenberg pulled it off well, though honestly, I did find the performance annoying and very distracting. Now, there are a couple of other theories as to why Lex is such an unhinged character. One theory is that he's actually being taken over by Brainiac, as some aspects of his personality are similar to the Lex-Brainiac hybrid from the Justice League cartoon. 
Also, in the deleted scene from the movie released by Warner, there's a moment where three laser scopes almost form the Brainiac symbol on the back of Lex's head. Another strong theory is that Lex was being manipulated by agents of Darkseid, and some suggest it might have been Desaad or possibly Glorious Godfrey, as both have been seen manipulating and twisting people's wills in the past. For the most part, I think they just wrote him crazy to kind of mirror the psychosis of Bruce Wayne, as well as to reflect the world's fear at Superman being a godlike entity. Though, honestly, the Brainiac thing could be kind of cool. The tone they set up was great, as this clearly extends from Man of Steel and easily feels part of the world originally set up by Snyder and crew. To their credit, they stayed with that tone throughout the movie. I was really looking forward to this idea of the government trying to come up with some way of controlling or guiding Superman, but sadly it basically got dropped after the explosion during the hearing. I mean, think about it. Man of Steel Superman turned himself into the military and gave up his freedom for Earth. Then later after Zod made his move, Superman offered to help and followed through with that. Now all of a sudden, men get shot in the desert and people think Superman did it? Really? Guns? Come on. This was just not well presented and makes me wonder if there were scenes cut out that gave more context to this idea of setting up Superman. Was it just Luther or the government as well? At any rate, it was a plot point presented and then basically dropped. Okay, let's move on to the actual idea of Batman vs. Superman. Honestly, the setup for the Superman and Batman fighting just felt clunky, but when it came to the actual fight itself, I think they did an amazing job with the visuals. Now, what do I mean by clunky? Well, we really do not get much setup as far as why Superman is so pissed at Batman. Yes, we get some conversation between Clark and Perry, but none of it seems strong enough to me. I mean, when Superman first confronts him, he lands in front of the Batmobile while Batman is chasing Luther's men with the kryptonite. The surprising thing is that we don't see Superman do anything about the guys that were shooting at Batman, let alone all the fire and explosions around, which was not a very Superman thing to do. Now, on the other side, it seemed Batman's main motivation was the destruction of Metropolis, and in particular the Wayne financial people that were killed. Which, yeah, I can understand his strong motivation considering his background, but enough to want to kill Superman? From what we understand, Superman has been doing good and saving a lot of people. So why kill him? Batman is meant to be the greatest detective in the world, and it just kind of seems that they dropped that quite a bit in this movie. Like I said, though, the actual fight looked amazing. So many nods to The Dark Knight Returns and some pretty decent dialogue as well. Batman picked the location for the site and set up plenty of traps. This was awesome as it showcased his tactical skills. It is clear that Batman is the more experienced fighter, which is fine, as Superman at this point has always relied just on his brute strength. Still, Clark did put up a good fight. Batman's armor looked so sick and I love that it was damaged throughout the fight. As the kryptonite started wearing off Superman, you started seeing more and more damage to the gauntlet as opposed to Superman's head movie. That was a nice touch. It was great. The choreography, brilliant. Though as good as it was, I just couldn't shake the feeling of convenience at Lex kidnapping both Martha and Lois on the same exact night that Batman planned to fight Superman. Maybe Lex somehow had the Batcave bugged and learn Bruce's plan, but that's just something never shown. So we as the audience are left to just accept it, and that really bothered me. For the most part, I was really impressed with the overall cast, as they all seemed to really fit their roles. Jeremy Irons was just beyond awesome as Alfred. You can tell he cares deeply for Bruce, but is having doubts about him as a man and definitely as a hero. He tries his best to steer and advise Bruce, but as is typical, Bruce does what he wants and, well, learns from it later. I just love Martha Kent, as she really is a major grounding force for Clark. Her line about him not owing the world anything was spot on as, like in Man of Steel, Clark had to decide who he wanted to be. Now, Lois was a mixed bag for me, as, on one hand, it continues to show her amazing investigative journalist skills, but on the other, she really gets shoved into the damsel in distress role. Yes, 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 this did happen in Man of Steel, but it just seemed to be intensified in this movie. A scene that really bugged me was right after the Superman fight with Batman, she threw the kryptonite spear into the water, which sort of made sense as she wanted to protect Clark. 
But then again, anyone couldn't have just come around and find it. So yeah. The part that bugged me was during the Doomsday fight, she went back for the spear and from what I could tell, she would have no knowledge or motivation to do so. I mean, I doubt she could hear them talking about the spear and there would have been no reason for her to assume the creature was Kryptonian. So yeah, just another of those convenient moments in the movie. Now, if there was something I missed in that scene, please let me know down in the comments. The Justice League cameos were handled in an interesting way. Apparently, Lex has been on the lookout for metahumans, and Bruce manages to get these files when he decrypts them from Lex's computer. I do have to say it was pretty comical that the actual reveals came by way of an email between Bruce and Diana. But hey, you do what you gotta do, right? In the Flash's video, we see him stop a robbery out of uniform, and he also had the Vision cameo with Bruce. Cyborg's video showed his father trying to save his life, and somehow managed to get a mother box which fuses and repairs it. The mother box is another big hint at Darkseid, as well as other potential new gods. The Aquaman cameo was a bit disappointing as he basically posed for an underwater camera like he was in some hair shampoo commercial. I honestly laughed as it just seemed out of character as Aquaman would want to keep himself as well as the Atlanteans a secret. The best part is that the files all contain the actual character logos. Another big issue people had were the dream or vision sequences. Now both Batman and Superman have them, but mostly it's a Batman thing. Clark sees Jonathan on a mountaintop, and it's safe to assume that this was just him mentally working things out, as Jonathan was his father and essentially moral compass. It kind of just reinforced things said by Martha as well. Now Batmans are a bit different, as some seem to be an extension of his psychosis, while others seem to be glimpses of alternate Earths. For me, the whole desert scene seemed to be an alternate Earth that was presented similar to the Injustice game, in which Superman goes full God complex over the death of Lois and his unborn child. In the movie, it only mentions a woman's death, and it could be taken as either Martha or Lois. Now in the movie, this vision has the added tease of Darkseid, as we see parademons assisting the Superman army the giant omega symbol, as well as the volcanoes or furnaces of apocalypse. Now, as Batman would really have no knowledge of Darkseid, these have to be some kind of vision sent by either the Source or some cosmic level entity. Now, this is where things got a bit trippy, as Bruce wakes up from this dream, and we see a portal in some strange armor that reveals the Flash, and he tells Bruce that he was right about him, Lois is the key, and then mentions that he's too soon, before disappearing. Right after this, we see Bruce wake up again. Again, at this point, Bruce has not actually seen Barry or the Flash, so why would he dream of him? Now in the comics, Flash is able to time travel, as well as cross universes, but I don't actually recall him being able to enter dreams. So yeah, these scenes are just meant to hint at things to come, but really have no context for the movie other than to heighten the idea of Bruce not liking Superman. The big standout for me was Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman, as I had some serious doubts early on about her acting ability, and those were completely put to rest. I'm so glad I was wrong as she was brilliant on screen. She had the look and attitude down so well. There are a couple moments where people mention Greek gods, and she just has this slight knowing smile on her face that just made me laugh, but in a good way. Her and Bruce have some slight chemistry, which I'm sure will be intensified in later movies. The best moment was when she leaped at Doomsday with a smile on her face. Wow, just so cool to see that in live action. Even though she's only on screen for a short time, she left such an impact that I'm really looking forward to the Wonder Woman movie to learn more about her character in this particular world. So let's talk about Doomsday as this was another character that carried a lot of controversy after being spoiled in a previous trailer. This Doomsday, like other things in the movie, was a mix of quite a few different comic book sources. Originally in the comics, Doomsday was a creation of a Kryptonian scientist many years ago through a cloning process that allowed for each subsequent clone to be immune to whatever killed the previous one. In this case, Doomsday is essentially a Kryptonian abomination created by Lex by combining his DNA with Zod's within the Genesis Chamber. This kind of borrows aspects from Smallville, in which Doomsday was Zod's son, but his DNA was spliced with various alien animals to kind of create that Doomsday look and the Doomsday powers. 
There was also a time in the comics where Lex was able to access the remains of Doomsday and basically combined its DNA with Superman's, which allowed it to regrow into a new Doomsday that had Kryptonian powers, but also Kryptonian weaknesses. So yeah, there's definitely some basis for the creation how they portrayed it within the movie. As far as powers go, Doomsday was mostly known for his immense strength, regenerative abilities, toughness, but above all else, the ability to adapt to things that severely hurt or kill it. If killed, it would come back with increased powers. For example, it grew bone protrusions and claws to protect from getting hit and damage opponents at a longer range. To nullify sound attacks, its ear chambers were covered up. At one point in the comics, it actually developed the ability to breathe fire in order to take out the Martian Manhunter. So I was okay for the most part with the breath attack. Now the whole absorbing damage is a bit of a stretch, as there was a time where Doomsday was able to absorb and redirect energy, similar to the movie, but I can't honestly remember if that was actually Doomsday or a modified clone. So they kind of mixed an ability to absorb energy with his adaptability in my mind. Now we do see Doomsday grow some additional bone protrusions and claws, so pretty sure the look will continue to change as the character comes back in. We will have to see how they use Doomsday in the future, as it will definitely be coming back in my opinion. Now, Doomsday did have a similar appearance to the trolls from the Hobbit series, but what annoyed me the most was that the CG just looked rough. Not sure if they just rushed it, but there were several moments where it had that obvious CG look, which also happened unfortunately with the Batmobile in some earlier scenes as well. For me, the treatment of Superman was the biggest thing that bothered me. At the end of Man of Steel, we had a Superman that had emotionally grown after his fight with Zod. He had a confidence about him, as well as I could see the promise of hope that was always so important with this character. In this movie, we have a rather apathetic and somewhat bitter Superman. I mean, he loves Lois, but that seems to be his only real focus. Well, that and stopping Batman. We do see him perform heroic acts, but he just never seems to be fully invested in it. In a lot of ways, Superman basically disappeared on screen as a character, and that really disappointed me as he's one of my favorite comic book characters. He was the hero that all other heroes measured themselves against. No matter how dark things seemed, his light would always shine through. I still think that Henry Cavill is giving us one of the best presentations of Superman, but in this case, I felt the writing failed him. So much emphasis was placed on Batman, and laying the groundwork for Justice League, that Superman became an afterthought. This really became apparent in the Senate hearing scene, as after the explosion we see Superman standing in the flames with a pained expression on his face. No scenes of him putting the fire out or getting survivors cleared, nope, just standing. Then later on he mentions to Lois that he never looked for a bomb. I know it doesn't seem like much, but these scenes really bothered me, as it seems Superman would have definitely smelled the pee, as well as noticed that the senator was in a near panic state. Honestly, I could have handled this, but then they went ahead and shoved in the death of Superman arc in this movie, and that just completely failed in my opinion. For me, all emotional reaction to the death was ruined by a couple of things. The first being that they actually showed him die twice, with the first taking place in space, after he and Doomsday are hit by the nuke. We see him floating lifeless with his arms spread out, but then is brought back to life by the sun. This essentially nullified any reaction to the later death when he is impaled by Doomsday. The other big problem I had is that this happened way too soon in the franchise. In the comics, the death of Superman was a universe-shattering event. Here was arguably the greatest and strongest hero, and he is killed when no one thought he could be. It shook the foundations of the Justice League, and in particular, Batman and Wonder Woman. Not to mention the entire world mourned his death. At this point in the movies, it is so early in his career that he has not had time to build the strong belief and faith around him, and it just seemed to be a waste. Yes, they tease the audience at the end that he is alive, but again at this point, it's to be expected. And sadly, based on what they have set up, it does seem that Superman will actually be coming back as a potential villain in the Justice League movie, for at least part of it, I imagine. So like I said, the movie had some amazing visuals and fight scenes, as these are areas that Zack Snyder really excels at. 
Sadly, weak and cluttered writing ended up hurting the movie in the long run. By no means am I saying this is a terrible movie, but it just felt very average. And I hate to say that about this movie. I will give them credit for really trying to do something different than past DC movies, as well as really setting up their own unique world. I think as the future movies come out and they begin to tighten their concepts and plan, things will come together nicely. This movie just missed the mark with me and honestly I left the theater feeling nothing at all. And I cannot remember another movie making me feel that way. Again, these are my opinions, and if for you the movie was amazing, and all you had hoped for, then I am so happy for you. That just was not the case for me. Alright guys, so those are my lengthy thoughts on Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. Go let me know down in the comments below what you thought about the movie, and what your hopes for are for the future of the DC Cinematic Universe. And if you have any questions on the characters or any of the concepts brought up in the movie, go and put those down in the comments below as well. As always, I'd love to have some conversations with you guys. And if you take a look at your screen, I've got a few links for you to follow for some other videos that I think you might have an interest in of mine. And those same links will be provided in the interactive card on the top right of the screen, as well as down in the description below. And if while watching the videos you feel so inclined, definitely subscribe to the channel. We would love to have you on board. And if you have subscribed already, thank you so very much. I really do appreciate it, and I hope you've been enjoying the videos. All right, with all that being said, have a great rest of your day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.